You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing SmackDown Live from November 7th. Yeah, since you uh, did the beginning, we actually have a date. It's true. Yeah. I'm so. more efficient. Sure, why not? Yeah, so uh, the show starts off with um, AJ and Jinder both doing promos about their match later on in the night. Just going to get right into it, huh? Yeah, well, there's no... no. We get to the important stuff later on. Fine. Yeah. Fine. We got, we got it. We got a, I don't know, whatever. But yeah. So pretty much meaningless promos. Oh, I'm going to beat the guy, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And um, so yeah, the, uh, the show itself starts off with um, Shane McMahon coming out. Yes. The yes. money has come out. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then he talks about the usual Survivor Series stuff. This is the one night a year that. We're on SmackDown, fight each other, blah, blah, blah. Man. <clears throat> Nailing it into the ground. Yeah, pretty much. Hammering it so, into the ground. Whatever. And then he's like, and then there's one one, one group that um, exemplifies mm-hmm. what it means to be on SmackDown Live. Well, first he said he was going to get revenge for Daniel Bryan on Kurt oh, Angle at yes. Survivor Series yes. because of what happened. Yes. And then, um, then he calls out that team that mm-hmm. I was referring to, which yes. happened to be the New Day, mm-hmm. the people who caused the a ruckus at the end of Raw the night yes. before. Yes. Um, so they come out, and they said that they didn't intend to cost Dean and Seth the titles, mm. um, but they are okay with it, yep. and they know that they aren't going to do anything about it anyway, sure. which really kind of speaks to the. Okay, we're going to get a Shield versus New Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing SmackDown is technically the heels at this point in the whole feud. Because they're the ones that attacked. Oh, twice. well, yeah, that seems like a very obvious thing. Yeah, yeah. Despite the fact that Team SmackDown is all faces. <laughs> yeah. And Team Raw is more heels than mm-hmm. faces. That's true. Because there's three heels, right? No. No, Joe. Oh no! It's just the two. It's Joe and Strowman. Man, Strowman's not even a heel. He's not really quite a heel anymore. Hmm. So (laughs) there goes that. Yeah. Oh well. But anyway. So um. Yeah, Shane Wright said that the new day embodies everything that SmackDown Live means, or the Under Siege thing means. Yeah. And uh, and then Shane says because, and then that's when Biggie, you know, does the New Day rocks thing, and then they all start dancing. It was awkward. A little bit. It's Shane McMahon. He's got to insert himself into any type of... Uh... It's it's kind of like when Stephanie started to dance with them. It was like mm. a year or so ago. Probably longer than that. Yeah. Because this was, I think, pre-brand split mm-hmm. when uh, the New Day started dancing with Stephanie. They probably still heels back then. It's possible. <clears throat> anyway, um, so... And after this, while, or while they're dancing, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens come out. Mm-hmm. So we kind of expected that since Owens and Shane are kind of intertwined at this point in time. Right, yeah. Um, they basically come out and saying that, you know, when SmackDown loses, it won't, it'll be no one's fault, but obviously the men in the ring, or Shane's, it'll no, be Shane's specifically fault. Specifically Shane's yeah, fault, yeah. Because they uh, basically screwed out of their matches because... Orton had won by a low blow, and had that been Sammy, it wouldn't have happened, yep. and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So it's unfair. He's biased against uh, Shane. Mm-hmm. Is biased against Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens. Yes, it's not fair. They said. That's what they say. Mm-hmm. So Shane kind of makes a retort, and then he goes, "Oh, we're going to make a match right now between Sammy Zayn and Kofi Kingston." Yeah, it's kind of random. <laughs> a little bit, but. I guess yeah. they kind of wanted to... Oh, well, yeah, he said he was making the match, and then he said, and it'll happen next, or yeah. now, or whatever. Yeah, so... So then we got that match. Yeah, this was um, wasn't a bad match, but it was, like, not very interesting, because there wow. wasn't a whole lot of involvement mm-hmm. with, like, the other guys, because the New Day and Owens kind of just sat on the outside, outside yeah. during the match, at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a commercial match, right? Pretty much, yeah, because mm-hmm. it started, and then I think they went to commercial. Right. Um, so they um, <clears throat> during the match, towards the end, there was a lot of like back and forth reversals, and then kind of uh, Kofi, I think, goes for Trouble in Paradise, mm-hmm. but is unsuccessful, 
And then Sami Zayn goes for a hold of a kick, but he get that gets reversed. And then kind of out of nowhere, Kofi Kingston hits a cross body and he is able to pin Sammy. Oh, that's a weird ending. Yeah. So, um... I guess Sammy's back to his ways. Losing him? <laughs> yep. But yeah, immediately after the match, um, Kevin Owens attacks Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. And then... The rest of the New Day come in the ring, right? Yes, and then um, Zayn and Owens kind of like... Run away. Leave the ring and run to the ramp. Yeah. And that was kind of the end of it. Yep. And then we learned today that apparently Owens and Zane were sent home from the UK tour or European tour. Yeah. And uh, apparently they were supposed to take a beating from the New Day after this and decided to... uh, Not. Yeah. Kind (laughs) of... I forget what they used the saying. Went into business for themselves. There you go. Um, That's the thing. So... They went off script, so they decided to send him home. Yep. It, it did seem like this segment ended a little strangely. Awkwardly, yeah. <laughs> nah, I so. gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Uh, then we get an interview backstage with Jinder, and he basically says that AJ is just an appetizer for him for mm-hmm. when he goes up against the Beast. Yep. To call himself the Beast... Uh, what the hell did he call him last time? The Beast Master or something beast like that? Master. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. He's going to feast on the Beast. At a Survivor Series. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. And then we got a Bludgeon Brothers promo. Well, apparently they had debuted on the tour. Uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> makes sense. And apparently they had some cool entrance and stuff like that. What? Well, so that's hopefully something. it's something. Hopefully they can get them over. Yeah. I mean. Well, the problem is the team is a solid team. They're just booked with a very over the top gimmick. gimmick yeah so <clears throat> it could be one of those okay we have a crappy gimmick but we're gonna make it work mm-hmm. or it's gonna be they're defined by their gimmick and it doesn't work right yeah so but um so then up next we had rusev first randy orton uh orton was taking the place of aj styles yeah so had if rusev beat orton he would be the fifth member of the team mm-hmm. and if he lost well then they'd find another t- person yeah I, going into this <laughs> i was like okay i guess rusev's gonna win made sense so um and then i, I was thinking before you know actually we'll, we'll get to it afterward mm-hmm. so uh dade in english comes out and introduces rusev sings a song about mm-hmm. him yeah the usual and he says when he wins it's gonna be rusev day mm-hmm. <coughs> but apparently rusev really wanted to win uh yeah he was Gone. uh because he would like knock down randy and, and then, just go right away for the cover yeah uh-huh. And then he would kick out, and then he'd cover him again. Mm. He'd kick out and cover him again. So very go. persistent. And we get a look in backstage where everybody's awkwardly looking at the TV. Yeah, it was um, Shinsuke. Sheen, Shinsuke, and uh, Rude. Rude. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then, uh, yeah, I guess Rusev had Orton down, right? Yeah, this was strange because Rusev was just, like, hanging out in the corner waiting for him to get up, mm-hmm. I guess. And then he, like, walked in, over. And then Orton hit him with an RKO? Yep. It, Rusev took an interesting landing on that. It was, like, on his forehead when he went down. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was all. Mm-hmm. So Rusev is not joining Team SmackDown. Yeah. So at this point, we didn't know who was. See, w- what I was thinking is that, oh, hey, the loser of the world title match at, at the end of the show, maybe he'll be the fifth member. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because... <clears throat> Really, what else are you going to do? Well, they definitely did something. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that yeah. later on. Um, so up next, we have a backstage segment. This was interesting. Yeah, Ellsworth's kind of like <laughs> creeping around the locker room. Yes, Tamina was just standing outside the locker room. Or no, I she came she out, right? She walked of, out yeah, yeah. of the women's locker room. Can I talk to Carmella? Yeah, he was like, can you go Carmella, please? <laughs> And then uh, Becky comes out instead, mm-hmm. and she's like, you don't have to worry about Carmella. You have to worry about me, because yeah. they, they had announced earlier in the you're, night that the two of them have a match together. You're just a woman. You can't beat a man in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, he was saying a bunch of stupid stuff. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he said, tonight I'm going to prove who's the better man. Yeah, and then uh, Becky said, wow, that was a lot of ballsy stuff coming from you. Or, yes, yeah, it was a ballsy statement you made, and mm-hmm. said for uh, someone that doesn't have any. Yep. And that was how the segment ended. It was, it was good. Yeah, apparently there was a lot of references to that in like the twi- the tweets that they mm-hmm. had 
showed like yeah. right before the Because I guess what was Becky sending a challenge out to Carmella and then Ellsworth was the one that answered it? No, Carmella said that Becky shouldn't be team captain. Oh, okay. And then that kind of roped um, mm-hmm. Ellsworth into it. Yeah. It makes a hell of a lot more sense to have this match happen here. Oh, absolutely. Rather because than, it, yeah. it's like a storyline thing. And this way you don't have to put Carmella in a match with with um, another woman where right, they're supposed to right, be working right, right. together. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it makes sense to do something mm-hmm. like this. Yeah, because everybody's qualified for the match. Technically, well, they yeah. never did that. They just made the teams. Yeah, except for Lana. Lana. But she's still out there with them, so. Yeah, yeah, she's part of the team, mm-hmm. even if she's not on the yeah. team. And then uh, we get a recap of the last two weeks of uh, the so-called invasion of SmackDown on Raw. Yeah. And just kind of same stuff they've gone over. Yeah, it's really... They're probably just filling time mm-hmm. slash, you know, just oh, yeah. getting, making sure people don't forget. Well, they don't have to worry about commercial breaks and stuff like that when they're doing, doing oh, this. Oh, live? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, so it's not like you have those rest holds and everything like that. It's probably similar to what Impact does is they'll have the match and then they'll just cut it in a point because mm-hmm. usually when they come back, somebody's, you know, in the same spot uh-huh. or just a, a couple of seconds after. Ah, gotcha. But uh, so that brings us to James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. and all the women besides Natalia was outside the ring for the match. Yes. So we got an entrance for each one of them, right? Or did they all? Or were they all? I think out they were there? all in the. Were ring they all in the ring? The, okay. In the commercial, or it came back from commercial, <clears throat> or they're all outside of the ring. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> see, they had hyped this. I think months back, like they were alluding to a match between Becky and Ellsworth. Which yeah. Even I think it was prior to SummerSlam. I was going to say, I think that we were just under the assumption that they wouldn't have an intergender match. Right. So it really didn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, if JBL was on this, it would have been an interspecies match. (laughs) (laughs) So what he said a lot. Yep. So, um... Yeah, this... Like, I I was looking forward to this because I really wanted to see, you know, an actual match between a man and a woman in WWE. uh Like, that happens on the independents all the time, but it was kind of a... uh, gimmick match more or less well um you know, it in, seemed in, very uh, apparent that becky lynch could wrestle circles around james Ellsworth. well obviously <laughs> so that that wasn't a surprise no um but it just looked like somebody training somebody in a little bit right? yeah. that's what it seemed like a seminar because like when they first announced that this match i was like all excited and then i was thinking i'm like oh this is gonna be really bad now i think about it <laughs> And then it ended up being a lot, lot better than no, I they, expected. No, they did a good job. Yeah, well, Becky, you can, Becky carried him pretty well. Let's be honest. Ellsworth has no shame, so you can do anything with him. It's true. He's very malleable. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's his character. It's true. Do whatever. Mm-hmm. Pin me, pay me. Job squad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they kind of exchanged back and forth throughout the match. I think. At one point, uh, Ellsworth started pushing Becky yeah. and pushed her out of the ring. And that's when Becky came and, like, I guess knocked him out the other side. Yep. Then he started to walk back up the entrance ramp, but all the women gathered in front of it. I don't know if they threw him back in the ring or did he um, just... Charlotte and Lana awkwardly pushed him towards the oh, ring. Oh, okay. And it was like <clears throat> they were gesturing to push him, but mm-hmm. they weren't actually doing it. Do it. It was That part was odd, yeah. but... So then he gets back in the ring and he gets on his hands and knees and starts kissing Becky's hands, yeah, right? Like, don't hurt me. <laughs> don't hurt me. Yeah. Asking for forgiveness. And uh-huh. then uh, she ends up putting him in the disarmer, disarm him. Yes. And uh, he taps out. Mm-hmm. And then after the match, Carmella gets in the ring and uh, super kicks him. Yeah. So, so I don't know what that means. I don't know. But Ma- maybe Ellsworth is gone soon. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible it's possible yeah because he's what been a year now maybe they signed Four a year, year contract and it was yeah it was a little earlier than that but before no mercy last year right um that was october's pay-per-view think, i think i don't think it was before no mercy wasn't that because he's a big no no that was a tlc when they had yeah that that, that happened that, okay yeah so he was probably around before then but i don't think he was signed until and backlash was last year september right or was no mercy then that's no, um, backlash, right? backlash was september yeah. and no mercy TLC. was um october I thought, when was tlc oh december tlc was in december oh okay that's what it was yeah, yeah, yeah. right it was, it's raw had what roadblock right yes end of the line yes so all righty it, it could have been he signed a year contract mm. and this was the year it's possible or right before the year yeah 
and I don't think anyone's going to miss James Ellsworth. He's he's kind of a novelty. Oh, absolutely. So he's entertaining for what he's worth, but I don't. He's not really, mm-hmm. not really missing anything by yeah. having him not here. No, no. So then we go backstage, and Charlotte and Shane are talking. I think they were talking strategy or something like that, saying yeah. that we need to be strong or have a, a dominance at uh, Survivor Series. Got to be ready. Oh for yeah, better ready about yeah raw invading. That's it. Then Natalia walks up, and then she tells Shane, "I, I accept." And <laughs> Charlotte was like. Uh, Oh yeah, that that she will uh, will beat Alexa Bliss and then take Charlotte's place at, at in the uh, the five on five, mm-hmm. and then Charlotte calls her delusional, and then Shane was like, you know, uh, your match at Hell in a Cell between you and uh, Charlotte, me and Daniel Bryan really didn't like the way you uh, presented yourself, beating her with a chair, mm-hmm. and then Natty went on, you know, saying, oh, I was what uh, self uh, self preservation, yeah, basically. But it was actually just cheating. Yeah. So then uh, Shane says, you know what? Next week, we're going to have a match. Title match. Natalia versus Charlotte. Yes. So, so that could be another match that changes at Survivor Series. Another potential title change, mm-hmm. yes. Um, Which technically she would take Charlotte's place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also, I think probably a little earlier in the night, they had put a, um, a uh, what's it called? Like a, like a vignette or something. No, it wasn't a vignette. It was like the pictures. Oh, ah, okay. The, um, why can't I remember what those are called? Like the, the for it's the still, match next yeah. week. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah. It's just like a but, promotion for it. Yeah. And it was um, supposedly Baron Corbin versus Sin Cara for the U.S. title. Yep. But Sin Cara got hurt on the European tour, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, so we're not sure exactly if this that happens gonna happen. before, after. I don't know what their plan is. Yeah, maybe no someone else will wear the Sin Cara mask. Maybe Chris Jericho will make an early return. No, that's not going to happen, my friend, because he's going to be wrestling Kenny Omega at when is Wrestle that supposed Kingdom. To, that's in January. January. Though. What makes you think he can't go to wherever they are next week and just wear the Sin Cara mask? I guess it's possible. <laughs> yeah. It is Chris Jericho. That would be Larger funny. than life. It would be funny. It would be hilarious. Yeah, so, but um, I don't know if that's going to happen. No, I probably won't, but mm. it would be funny. So uh, up next, we have the first of two title matches yes. in the night. Mm-hmm. Got the Usos versus Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable. Mm-hmm. And the Usos come down before the match and cut a promo on them, mm-hmm. hyping them up and then uh, smashing them down, basically. Yeah, well, they called them American Alpha Part 2. Yep. yep. Which is fair. Yeah, it's true. Um, this is a relatively short match. Yeah, well, I, I it was. it honestly seemed like they cut it short. Yeah. Well, I, th- well, anyway, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, so yeah, the, the, I guess the action spilled to the outside. Mm. Um, I think Shelton Benjamin was still in the ring, right? And uh, I believe Jay so. Uso was on the outside, and I think Jimmy was somewhere. Yeah. And uh, Chad Gable came running up and hit Jay with a chop block, mm-hmm. the back of the knee. Yep. And Jay went down. And started getting up, walking toward the ring at like the count of eight, and then kind of just laid back down. Yeah. And they got counted out. The it looked like the it was, way he landed certainly yeah. made it look like it's possible mm-hmm. that he really hurt himself. But I don't think but so. I don't know for sure. Yeah, um, we would have seen reports on it. That and this kind of went back to what happened um, last year, where um, the Usos took out um, Chad. Uh, yeah, Chad Gable's legs. Oh, that's during right. The um, the tournament for the first tag team champions. Mm-hmm. So um, good call. I forgot it, about that. It kind of makes sense. It was kind of like payback. Mm. But I, I think ultimately Benjamin and Gable will go over the Usos in their next match. Oh yeah, they'll I, probably be the next champs. Obviously, it makes yeah. sense. But I so. think they want to keep it in the story, you know, without making Benjamin and Gable look bad or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're taking a loss. This exactly. would be the way to do it. Uh-huh. But, <clears throat> Makes sense. Yep. So, I mean, whatever. Yep. It is what it is. It's true. So, uh, up next, we had an interview with uh, Renee Young interviewing AJ Styles mm-hmm. about uh, his match that he's about to partake in. With Jinder Mahal. Yeah, asks if AJ... Uh, what he feels... What he thinks about uh, Jinder calling him an appetizer. Mm-hmm. And then um, he basically says that, you know, 
uh, he's gonna win tonight, and yeah. then on uh, at Survivor Series, he's gonna feast on the beast. That's it. And uh, so Dave's yeah. kind of saying that he was the underdog, and the critics have always said this about him. You know, he's yeah. smaller and things like that. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna show everybody like he's always done. Yep. By working harder, I think yes. he said. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. That's right. And that brought us to the main event. Yeah, that started super early. Yeah, it was what, 9.30-something? 9.37? If even. Yeah. Um, yeah, there really wasn't much that happened in the show. Like, yeah, it was no. one after the other. Yeah, it was bang, bang, bang. Yeah. So, um, wait, this was... Um, this was one of Jinder's better showings, that's yes, for sure. Yes, but it was 100% AJ. No, well, yeah, but... Now, I'm just saying that this was a lot of but AJ. It it kind of reminded me of AJ versus Corbin, where in the moments when Jinder looked good, he looked dominant, mm-hmm. like Corbin did. He lo- could show his strength and size, which obviously against a much smaller opponent. Yeah, it's a lot easier. But yeah, he looked more dominant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, for for the large majority of the match, the Singh brothers were actually a non-factor. Yeah, which they were kind of just surprising. standing outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the only time they got involved was when um, AJ is able to hit the 450 splash, mm-hmm. the springboard. Yeah. Um, and then they pull him outside the ring. AJ goes nuts. Yep. And he starts beating him up all over the place on the yeah, outside. Yeah, he dove and grabbed oh, uh, yeah. one. I, mm-hmm. I think it was Samir. He was he was selling his knee, mm-hmm. and he because he had hit the the tiebreaker. I don't remember what he. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he had hit Hiroshima it on Ginger or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and he was selling it because I guess the, he wanted to make it look like that hurt him. Mm-hmm. So he, he chased down one of the things, and like you said, he died. Launched and, at him. Yeah, landed um, on his stomach and grabbed him down. Mm-hmm. Then he went after the other one. Yep. So, and then he goes back into the ring with Jinder, mm. and uh, Jinder is able to hit him with the Colossus, mm. but he rolls over to the ropes. Yeah, you can get... see him slightly moving yeah. himself mm-hmm. over to make sure he had enough room. Yeah, so he uh, gets his foot on the rope, breaks mm-hmm. out the pin. Which, that's a big difference between being there live and seeing it, and, you know, and on TV, where you can obviously make things out more. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Jinder goes for a super Coloss, <laughs> basically going up. Put AJ on the top rope, yeah. setting him up, but uh, AJ is able to reverse it, and um, he kind of jumped. I guess he hit him and then jumped to the apron. Jinder was dazed. AJ jumps on the top rope. It's the phenomenal forearm. One, two, three. Yep. New WWE champion. Yeah, definitely. Um, nice, nice. Uh, nice surprise. Yeah. yeah. I mean, AJ has. He's been doing a lot for the company mm-hmm. lately sacrifice not like you know just whatever's asked he has no problem doing yeah it's true and And, um because i think that's what a lot of people think that's the reason they kind of gave it to him what because just like a thank you to all he's been doing i guess but now wouldn't really be the time well i I feel like it's gonna go back on gender before they go to india i i know that but i mean like wouldn't it be like a month ago if yeah. that was the case, you would, yeah, because yeah, I, I, I think that this is more in response to the fact that nobody wants cared to about see gender versus yeah. yeah, that that's probably what it was mm-hmm. because they didn't want gender to look bad, right? So instead of having him get squashed by Brock, yeah, that, that was a tough match to book. Yeah, so they probably thought about it a little yeah. bit. It's like okay, this really isn't going to work, so they scrapped it, put AJ on. They mm-hmm. didn't really need to work that much with AJ and. No, Rock, because so. it's one of those things where you're in shock and you're like, oh my God, this is going to happen now. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have to, you'll have one promo because I think Lesnar's going to be at Raw next week. Yeah. So Heyman will kind of. No, Heyman's going to say like, okay, this is a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. But so. uh, he's going to be like, we were preparing for this opponent and now we have this. So yeah. things have to change. So. Because we're actually facing an opponent now. It's Something true. Something to that a extent. Real, a real wrestler. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, because I think. Lesnar and Nakamura met up once in New Japan. Yeah, I believe that's the yeah. case. But I, I don't believe him and AJ have ever been in a ring together. Probably not, because I think Lesnar was long gone by the time AJ yeah. got there. Because, um, yeah, yeah Lesnar was doing UFC yeah. at that I, point. I forget, and this is completely off topic, but Kurt Angle was the IWGP champion at one point. Yes. Yeah, just forget about it. I was watching, I think I put on Pluto TV in a match between Samoa Joe and... Kurt Angle came up mm-hmm. in TNA, and 
<laughs> they all had the titles. Huh. Yeah. So he and Kurt had the IWGP. I was like, oh, I forgot he had that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so today it was announced that John Cena will be the fifth person on Team SmackDown. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, that really elevates this match because I, I think it was pretty raw heavy. In terms of star power? Yeah. Well, Orton's kind of like a floundering. Not really. I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, size. I mean, he's not. He's not floundering. He's, he's not. Th- he's not the guy anymore. No, that's what it is. He's just um, there. And then you have Bobby Roode, mm-hmm. who's still trying to get his, his planted. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, It'd and, be interesting to see where they go. with And him. Shinsuke, they're kind of not really sure what they're. Mm-hmm doing with him yet so he hasn't had any huge victories i mean he did beat orton and cena so he has yeah but no uh i don't don't think he's got the the presence yet Mm -hmm. well in their minds anyway so it feels like the dominant side was certainly raw but now Mm -hmm. you have john cena who kind of shifts or turns the tables a little bit but yeah like i said on our raw review that i had Liked your Kane idea, had they yeah. just because Kane was a SmackDown superstar last yeah. we checked, mm-hmm. and then putting him on Team SmackDown would have made so much sense considering him and Braun have been feuding. Yeah, that would have been one way to go, but like I said, I'm okay with this too. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, um, it like, definitely well, adds a big star power to the match because mm-hmm. the match really didn't have. I mean, it was really Shane and uh, Kurt. Yeah. yeah, I I also anytime they put Cena in anything nowadays is great so yeah i mean I, I like his build up though that's really what i look forward to it's true he's the best at it but you know at the same time having him be a surprise entrant in something yeah. is also because uh, you know if he's around he's going to be on smackdown on tuesday oh yeah absolutely so unless for some reason he's not around and it's just he's just showing up for the pay-per-view mm-hmm. it's going to be yeah. He'll drop some kind of crazy promo. and Yeah, and I guess you can just overlook the fact that it's been Roe versus SmackDown and he's the free agent. And, but that really doesn't matter. No, I know, but they made such a big deal about it being the one time a year when Raw and SmackDown face off. But I think this is how they're going to justify it. Mm-hmm. They're going to say that he went with... Um, His original show. No, he went with the person who paid him the most because that's what free agents do. I guess that's So he true. went with the money. Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon's the money. Yep. <laughs> if they do that, I'm fine with that. I'll yeah, at least because laugh. it's it's it it makes sense. Because <clears throat> that's what free agents do in sports. You're thinking again. I know. Can't do that. I know. Logic. You can't do it's that. Not a thing. But you know, like I said, it would be a good way to write off the the lack of com or the lack of I guess it's sense. Just, yeah, the they just thing. threw him in there. It yeah. was like, oh. I didn't think it's about like that we at all. We were going to put AJ in, but since AJ is the champion, he can't be in. It's just so. weird. Like, what do they do with Jinder now? They just throw him by the wayside? I mean... um, Well, he attacked the Singh brothers at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. So maybe he is off TV for a couple weeks. Well, because, I, yeah, I did hear that they were going to split the Singh brothers up from him. Yeah. And then have him come back and say that I don't need them anymore, mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, then, turn a face and then then go to India? Maybe. And have him, I'm doing everything legit now. Yeah. Something like that. I want to aspire to be like AJ Styles. <laughs> that won't happen. <laughs> um, but, you know, it'd, it'd be something. Yeah. But that would be the smart thing to do. I mean. What, have him be a good guy going into their target market? I, yeah. Yeah. That would make sense, mm-hmm. yes. But we don't we're also talking about yeah, the WWE. That's true. So uh um, But uh yeah. So uh that was our SmackDown review. Yeah. Um we're gonna end things a little bit differently. Whoa. Um if you stuck with us that long, we certainly uh or this long, we certainly appreciate it. And um I know this is a little risky, but if you uh have any comments on stuff we're doing good, stuff we're not doing. Yeah, tell so us good, if we're doing good or we suck. Yeah, so leave us a comment. Um Tell us if our videos are a little too long. Um, We could always do a shortened version and maybe put out um, two condensed reviews where we just talk about its stuff and our longer reviews are... Things we liked, things we didn't like. Yeah, and then have our longer reviews like like we're doing it now with uh, with the conversation back and forth, Mm -hmm. more of a traditional podcast type thing. 
So if you just want the information, we could do that. So let us know. We yeah. need your feedback. And Feed- uh, the more uh, positive or not, but the more feedback we get, the more helpful we can be to uh, helping you guys if you like what we do. Sounds good. So uh, now I'm going to go back to our, my normal. Uh, if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. Bye. Bye.